And now that we have an idea and understanding of how calorimeters work in chemistry, we remember we have two different kinds. We have the bomb calorimeter and we have the constant pressure calorimeter. Well, here we're going to use an example using the bomb calorimeter because what we're doing here is we are taking a sample, 27.2 grams of ethanol, and we're going to combust it or burn it in a bomb calorimeter because there we're producing gases and those gases could expand so we want to contain the expansion of the gases so that all of the heat generated in the reaction goes into the calorimeter. We have a calorimeter, a bomb calorimeter, with a heat capacity of 13.4 kilojoules per centigrade degrees which means for every 13.4 kilojoules of energy added to the calorimeter, the calorimeter will go up by 1 degree centigrade. Given that the delta H of the reaction, so the enthalpy of the reaction, is minus 1235 kilojoules per reaction, and of course, negative means that it's exothermic, it gives off heat, and that the calorimeter in the solution starts at 20 degrees centigrade, what will be the final temperature? So what will be the temperature increase? Then take the difference and figure out the final temperature. So here we have the equation. We can say that the heat gained by the calorimeter is equal to the heat given off by the reaction, and as before, the heat given out by the reaction is equal to the enthalpy of the reaction times the number of moles in the reaction, or I should say times the reaction divided by the number of moles in the reaction, and times the mass divided by the mass per mole. So that way we account for the amount of that we have in the sample and the number of moles in each reaction of the product that's being uh, reacted. Uh, I should, not the product, but the reactant, I should say. So let's write the equation down so we can take a look at it. So we have uh, ethanol, C2H5OH. Since it's a combustion reaction, the end products will be carbon dioxide and water, and those will be in gaseous form because so much heat is released. So CO2 gas plus H2O gas. Now we have to balance the equation. Notice we have two carbons, that means we need two of these. And we have, let's see, five plus one, that's six hydrogens. So we need, hmm, we need uh, five. And we're missing something on the left side, by the way, because you're not gonna have a very good combustion reaction unless you also have oxygen added to this reaction. So we need C2H5O8 for the ethanol, plus we need a certain amount of oxygen gas. But notice we need two carbons, so that's balanced. We have six hydrogens here, which means we need six hydrogens there. So now we have the hydrogens and carbons balanced. Now we have four oxygens here and three oxygens here. That's a total of seven. So we're going to need seven halves of this molecule, or three and a half oxygen molecules or moles of oxygen gas in order to make this reaction work. Okay, now that we have this reaction uh, written down, we, can, we realize we only have one mole of ethanol in the reaction. So this will just be one over here. Now, we're not looking for MC delta T, we're looking for delta T, which means we want to divide both sides by MC. So that means that this divided by MC, and this divided by MC, and this divided by MC. Now, of course, MC is the mass times the specific heat of the calorimeter, which ends up being the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So MC is really the heat capacity. This cancels out, so this is equal to, um, let's see here, we can do this, but since we don't know how much heat is given off, we're going to go ahead and use this portion of the equation. So this is equal to the enthalpy change, which we know is 1235. We put a minus in front of it to turn it into a positive number. So we have positive 1235 kilojoules per reaction. We multiply it times one reaction divided by the number of moles of the reactant, which in this case would be just one mole, so that's one mole. And then we multiply it times the mass of the sample, which is 27.2 grams, and we divide that by the molar mass. Now, the molar mass of ethanol, let's see here. We have two carbons, so that's uh, the mass, 2 times 12 grams, and let's just round it off to the nearest whole gram, so that's 2 times 12, which is 24 grams for carbon. We have, let's see, 1 oxygen, so 1 times 16 grams, that's 16 grams, and we have... Five, six hydrogens, so six times one gram, that would be six grams. Add it all together, we get 46 grams per mole for the ethanol. Let's round it off to the nearest uh, one gram, so that's 46 grams per mole. Notice the grams cancel out, the moles cancel out, the reaction cancel out. We end up with kilojoules, and now we need a calculator to find out 
what the change in temperature, oh, we're missing one thing, divided by mc. Can't forget that. The heat uh, capacity of the calorimeter right here, we need 13.4 kilojoules, kilojoules per degrees centigrade. That's a J for kilojoules. And notice then the units will come up in centigrade degrees. I probably want to write it as centigrade degrees like that. So the units will come out in centigrade degrees, which means the change in the temperature in the calorimeter will be equal to this number right here. All right, 1235 times 27.2 divided by 46 and then divide by 13.4 and we're left with 54.5 degrees. So delta T equals 54.5 centigrade degrees. Now, they ask him for the final temperature. They gave us the initial temperature. So we can say that delta T is equal to temperature final minus temperature initial. So we take temperature final is equal to temperature initial. When we bring it over to the other side, it becomes positive, plus the change in the temperature. So in this case, it would be 20 degrees centigrade plus 54.5 centigrade degrees. And together, that gives you 74.5 degrees centigrade as the final temperature of the calorimeter. And of course, that can be done in reverse. Let's say you didn't know the enthalpy of the reaction, but you knew how much of a sample you put in the calorimeter. You combust it, you measure the initial and the final temperature. And of course, from the final temperature, we can then go back and figure out the enthalpy of the reaction. But at least in this way, you can see you can go both ways in this kind of example. And that's how you find the final temperature that could be predicted. Now, that might be something you may want to do uh, because let's say that the answer came out to be 120 degrees centigrade, hmm, would you then want to go and proceed with the reaction? I don't think so. I don't think you want to bring that water inside a calorimeter to a boiling point from the reaction, and maybe you want to then compensate for it for maybe putting a smaller sample in there so you can do this, um, this particular reaction safely. So that way, no one gets burned. So this is actually a useful exercise.